What's up guys, I'm G5Cosmos here for Game 5 Smash. In this video, I'm going to be answering questions that you guys sent me. So, first off, we have from Mace Wilch. Who is your favorite video game character and why? So this was actually kind of a tricky one. I had to think about it because I like a lot of characters in different things like anime, TV shows, movies, whatnot. But I was actually kind of stumped for a second about my, video, uh, my favorite video game character. But I actually concluded that my favorite video game character is Link. So, I really like Link because, in a way, Link is you, is you the player. In fact, uh, I've read at least that the name Link was chosen because it's actually supposed to be like the word Link. Like, he is bringing the player and the game together. He is the link between the player and the game. And in single-player games, the experience that I always enjoyed the most was this sense of immersion that, uh, even though I'm playing a video game and, you know, the character doesn't look identical to me, um, that I identify as the character and I'm trying to live as the character and play the character making decisions as though it were me in the situation. And that always gave me the greatest enjoyment. Um, plus, I really like Link's design, uh, I like the way he fights, and I like the way he lets you be yourself in the game, even though um, it's not like there is necessarily a total ton of different decisions and whatnot you can make, but playing Zelda games I always felt really connected to the character, um, like I could play it like I would myself. Um, and I think he's just a really cool character in general. So yeah, I'd have to go with Link. Alright, next from Rairudo Kohai, we have, How do you think while playing in Smash Bros? This is a very good question. So, uh, in when it comes to like applying yourself to any kind of activity where you need to focus, um, like Smash, uh, I like to break it down in terms of there being two kinds of thought. Um, there's basically like conscious thought and subconscious thought. So, when you're playing a game, you really want to avoid conscious thought because conscious thought takes effort and it takes your focus away from the game. So if you're thinking, okay, uh, he hit he hit my shield here, I have to do Nair out of shield. Like if you're consciously thinking that, then you're never going to be able to do it in time. But subconscious thinking is closer to uh, like, um, just like, uh, I guess the good autopiloting is what I like to call it. Is like there's good autopiloting and bad autopiloting um, because even though autopiloting has a stigma for being like a bad thing, you don't want to just press buttons without thinking, but at the same time, you want to train your autopilot so that you're doing things that are right without needing to think about them. And that's what you see top players, you know, they're doing things right all the time, every frame, you know, I mean, not you know, perfect every single time, but how can they do that? It's not like they're thinking every single time, I need to do this, I need to do that. Um, they're actually have, with, through experience and through, you know, planning things out in their head when not playing the game, they've developed an autopilot that can take care of those things. So it's basically like subconscious thought that does things really quickly and you already know what to do in a situation. So you don't really want to think consciously when you're playing unless you're trying to learn something. What you want to do is you want to evaluate your gameplay and figure out what is it that you need to do more of, what do you need to do right in situations where you're doing something wrong, and then you need to then consciously think about that when you're playing, you know, usually in a less serious environment like friendlies. Uh, then think, okay, when I'm in this situation, I need to do that, I need to do that, I need to do that. And then by reminding yourself to do it over and over again, eventually you'll get to a point where you stop thinking about it, and then it becomes sub it becomes uh, subconscious thought, and you can do it every time. So it's it's really not like you want to think so much to speak until you're until you're just trying to train yourself to do something. You want to rely on your subconscious thought and just focus, and that really gets rid of the bad autopilot, as long as you're training your good autopilot to do the right things. Okay, next from Julian Lopez we have, what was your result of your first tourney, and how do you overcome going 0-2 in tourneys? Okay, so I actually have like two stories of my first tournament, because there's one of them that I feel like was my real first tournament, and there's one that was literally the first tournament I ever went to. So the, the first tournament that I ever went to was a brawl tournament at a play and trade, which uh, is a, is or was a, a game store, like a, like another kind of GameStop kind of chain. I don't know if they exist anymore, but uh, it was in Manhattan, um, Union Square maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. And I was very young. I was in high school. I was I don't know. This was probably like 2009, maybe maybe 2010. But I don't think it was 2000. It was a very long time ago. Um, and I entered a brawl tournament, and uh, I, I believe I went 0-2. I didn't even know how brackets worked at the time. I was just a casual brawl player, and uh, a friend of mine who was also a casual player really just heard about that there were tournaments, so I went to it. Uh, I remember I played... Who did I even play back then? I think I played Marth. Uh, yeah, I, I played Marth. And uh, I don't even remember who I played, to be honest with you. I just remember, you know, I didn't do too well. That was my first 
exposure to any of that, but at the time I wasn't really interested in like playing competitively or anything, so uh, I didn't go to another tournament for a really long time until uh, I want to say this was 2014 maybe? 2014 or uh, 2013, uh, which was the tail end of Brawl. Brawl was pretty much dead, but there were still a few people who played it, and at the time is when I was first getting into competitive Smash, um, and I attended this tournament. Uh, it was re relatively small, but it was a local with a lot of, you know, solid Brawl players who still like to play the game. Um, and I, I was still not that good at that at the time, but um, I guess I was good enough to get far in that small tournament. I placed ninth at that one. Um, I don't remember how many people I beat to do that. Uh, and yeah, so to answer the second part of your question, how do you overcome going 0-2 in tourneys? I mean, just get better. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Um, you know, it, it, you shouldn't really like. I mean, yeah, you want to you want to monitor your progress in bracket. Like, if you get better, you pay attention to it and and whatnot. But uh, different tournaments are different. Like, there are really good players. Well, maybe not really good, but there are, there are very solid players who can go 0-2 uh, at the locals here in New York City, like at Zeno, because the skill level is just really high. Um, plus, if you're not you know well known or don't place well, you get a low seed, which means you have to play somebody good. So uh, it's harder to to win in your winners uh, match. So yeah, I mean, just you just get better, and then you'll do better. There's there's really not not much else to say about that, you know. Don't get too bogged down about going 0-2, uh, unless you started doing better and then got worse. I guess that might be a concern, but you know, no one's you should never really expect much going to tournaments in the beginning. You know, it, it takes pro progress, and I'm sure you know many of the uh, top players now went 0-2 in their first tournament, maybe even their first few tournaments. So yeah. All right, next from Turbo Lobo 28, we have what do you think of Mexican tournaments? Uh, I think Mexico is a really strong scene. I haven't been there. Uh, I did actually meet a Mexican player at uh, Super Smash Con 2017, 16, whatever the last one I attended. By the way, guys, I'm going to be at the one this year. I'm going to make a video about that, uh, talking about how you can, you know, come say hi to me and stuff like that. But I will be attending it this year. But anyway, yeah, um, uh, obviously, you know, I'm familiar with the Mexican scene from tournaments I've seen, but I just wanted to account my experience with a Mexican player who I met who I don't even know who he is, but he was a Jigglypuff player, was really solid, really friendly to me, good guy, had a great experience with him, and uh, I bring this up because um, I think that that's a sign that just, you know, some random Jigglypuff player uh, from the Mexican scene was a strong player. So I think in general, uh, and Mexico's known for this, is having a strong Smash scene. Uh, as for the tournaments, I haven't watched too much in Ultimate, but in Smash 4, I would always watch the Smash Factors and some of the other tournaments um, that got the exposure thanks to the VG Bootcamp and other large streamers. Uh, always very, very solid talent from there. And at this point, you know, pretty much everybody in the world knows about Mexico's talent in uh, in Smash because you have players um, like Meister, you know, doing great things. And of course, MKLeo himself is, is from Mexico. Um, so yeah, I think only good things about their tournaments. All right, up next from Halcyon, we have Favorite Smash Title. Um, so someone once told me that your art will always be with the Smash title that you first played competitively. And I'm kind of split on that because I think there's some truth to, to, uh, truth to that. But at the same time, um, see, like, Brawl, I guess, was kind of my first competitive Smash game. But I don't really feel like I became a real competitive player until Smash 4. Like, I wanted to be competitive in Brawl, but... Uh, I, I felt like I was not really there. I was still kind of like a casual player towards the end of Brawl. But Smash 4 is what I really fell in love with, um, and I really do... I wouldn't say I miss Smash 4 overall, but there are things about Smash 4, especially Smash 4 Fox, that I really miss a lot. And I definitely have a connection to that game a lot. But I really love Ultimate so far. I don't love everything about it, but I really like it a lot. And um, I can't really call it my favorite Smash game because it's so new and, you know, there's still so much to explore in it. I guess if we were to say my current favorite Smash game, it's definitely Ultimate. I would rather play Ultimate now than any Smash game. Um, I've never really learned to play Melee competitively. I played it casually as a kid. If I learn to play Melee competitively, it might become my favorite Smash game because I really, really like uh, what you can do in that game. Um, even though, you know, I like the thought end of Smash a lot. I also love pressing a lot of buttons and, and doing a lot of like tech and movement and stuff like that. And Melee is all about that. So I might I might love Melee the most if, if I played it, but I don't really play it. And uh, 64, I never actually owned. Um, I rented it a few times. Uh, in case you guys don't know, uh, <laughs> for the younger guys uh, here, the when uh, back in the day you could uh, there were <laughs> there were video stores uh, where you could rent, you know, 
uh, DVDs and before that video cassettes. And uh, you could also rent games um, at them. And uh, I, I rented um, Smash 64 quite a few times and played it a few times. Lo loved it, but I didn't really own any Smash game until Melee, so don't really have any connection with 64 either. But yeah, I, I would have to say current favorite is definitely Ultimate. I'm really enjoying Ultimate. All right, for the last one, we're going to look on Twitter for a question from Salty Clams. He says, is there a proper way to study VODs like major aspects to look at in your play to improve as much as possible? Well, first off, I would definitely recommend that you go ahead and watch uh, my video on how to analyze a VOD. Uh, underrated video, I kind of flew under the radar there. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so when you look at a VOD, I would recommend that you try and pause a VOD anytime you see something that goes wrong, anytime you made a mistake. Um, depending on your level of experience, there may be things that... You know, you, maybe you don't get hit, for example, so you don't realize it's a mistake, so you might miss those, unfortunately. But eventually, you will get hit or punished or something go wrong for uh, doing something bad. And if not, hit me up for coaching. But anyway. Um... <laughs> Alright, but yeah. Uh, so, what you do want to see, though, is if you see a mistake that's recurring. So, if you, you find that you do the same thing a lot of times... So maybe you like spot dodge and you got hit for spot dodging in a, a specific situation multiple times. And you can know that that's something you want to focus on more if it's something that you're doing many, many times. Or at least the same thing every time you're in a situation, even if that situation doesn't come out around too much. Um, but I, th I think it's still important to pay attention to every single thing. Um, but the things you want to focus on the most and probably like prioritize to look at them first would be the things that you're doing a lot. And the, thing, the mistakes that happen more than once. Alright guys, thank you so much for the questions. I didn't have time to get every single one in this video, but I am going to make more videos like this. If you do want to ask me any more questions, uh, I'll make another uh, YouTube community post for that soon. Uh, but at any time, if you want, you could just tweet at Game5Smash. Just put the hashtag AMA so that I know you're looking to have your question answered in a video. And you can go ahead and do that. Also, really important, two things that I want to point out at the end of the video. First off, if you don't already know, if you watch any of my videos, you do know and you're probably sick of me saying it, uh, but I do offer coaching. My coaching has helped so many players out and I'm really, really enjoying to keep doing it more. You can DM me on Twitter if you're interested. Uh, I have some written options for the first section. That's a written set review and down below that's for a live session where we will talk over Discord and I will review your VODs with you, play with you online if you want, and really go in depth and help you improve personally. The second thing, I'm starting to stream now. Uh, I'm going to show you some clips right here, and you can see that I'm streaming both Smash, where I will do analysis of high-level slash top-level sets, showing you what top players are doing, why they're doing it, how they're doing things correctly, even showing you maybe the few times they do do things wrong, why things went wrong, and so on and so forth. Basically gives you a glimpse of also what I will do in a coaching session, uh, but you get to see that. Also, if you're a Twitch sub, uh, I can review your games during the stream as well. And I'm also streaming Persona 4 Golden at the moment. It's a lot of fun getting right into that game. So if you're into that kind of thing, you can come chill and check it out. Anyway, guys, that's going to be all for this video. Thank you so much for the questions once again, and thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Game 5 Smash for more tech and tips. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, he's Greninja. Okay. <laughs>